And if you do that, I hope you'll see something loud and clear. The miracle, the unity of spirit is a done deal. The war has ended. Whether the living agree, whether the living wake up, whether the parasites stay in power for another hundred years, in that sense is irrelevant. From a spiritual perspective, it's a done deal. And the energy that is demonstrating miracle after miracle, day after day, is not the living, but the spiritual side that is already taking this to a heart and is already having an effect. We are dragging the chain. The spiritual dimension of the universe and, and relevant to us is well and truly locked into this. It's a done deal and it's moving forward. And you will see, as hopefully you're seeing already, that people's dire predictions are failing to materialize. That doesn't mean that we won't see major climate change. We are seeing climate change. And we will see the effects in volcanoes and earthquakes. But the world will change for the better despite the living, not because of the living. If you feel somehow that you have the weight of the world on your shoulders, please, I ask you to take a broader look. Bear witness to what's taking place. Share with others. But the future and the safety of our world isn't dependent on us. It has already been taken up by those that have come before us. And rejoicing in the fact that the ideas of division and curse and hell and damnation and, and all of those things have finally been rendered null and void ab initio. Well, with that, we've covered a lot tonight. Uh, I'm certainly uh, out of breath. Thank you again for listening. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for those that continue to help in, in uh, financial assistance to me. I truly appreciate it. I really do. And I look forward to answering your questions now. And if you want to speak live, just press uh, star right, I think it is. I keep saying star or hash. I still don't know which. Uh, but let's get started with answering some questions and let's see if I can speak to some of you now. Thanks again. Okay, I don't see anyone coming up yet for questions, so I'm going to go into the chat and see if we have some callers here. Let's have a look. Um, I don't see any questions up yet. I'm just going to refresh uh, the window. So just hold on your questions for a second until I reload the window and just see if I can get this uh, a clearer view. Let's have a look and see what we have. One sec. One sec, one sec. Just re seeing the window in the um, talk show and it's coming back up. Great, I can see uh, uh, someone wants to have a chat. If you did put in a question, uh, I just ask people, please, can you re put your question into the chat while I'm going through the, uh, the call list? Because I had to reset the window. And if you had a question, I needed to re put it in, please. Uh, I just go to Dean and Strom. Hello, Dean and Strom, can you hear us? Uh, yes, hello, Frank. Hi. Um, Dean here in New York. Um, uh, thanks for uh, everything you're doing, uh, first off. And uh, earlier you were speaking about um, folks not acting as a true executor. And I think just uh, one of the things that I thought of, just, you know, off the top of my head, is that in our uh, education system, people basically have been de deprived of the really the tools needed to approach subjects you know as comprehensive yeah. as this 
And um, there's some um, useful sites, like um, one of them is called Trivium Education, and it kind of teaches you, uh, you know, the basic three, you know, the, there's seven liberal arts. And the one, this is a thing that's not really taught to us in our public education, and that is, yeah. you know, general grammar, formal logic, and classic rhetoric. And that's yes. one of the things that you had uh, spoke to directly before, which was it's not in the document. It's in your ability to express yourself. And that's it, Absolutely. Kind of, well, that's exactly absolutely. what rhetoric is and something that we're not taught. And in fact, we're, in public education, we're deliberately not taught those things. So I would encourage people to look into the Trivium and learn general grammar, formal logic, and classical rhetoric to use in conjunction with the uh, enormous amount of information that's provided um, in the canon. Mm-hmm. Combining the, you know, those three and the canon, you would be a force to be reckoned with um, in terms of, you know, your ability to present yourself to that Roman system. Yeah. And, you know, and not totally depend on the documents, okay? Um, that is the point. It's called the trivium, and it's trivium education, and I would really encourage everyone to kind of go through it so they can kind of get those tools so that when they do read the canons, they have those tools already. Okay. Um, the other one, the other question I had was, um, how does one go about volunteering their time to help um, Acadia? Well, what, I, what I'd love to do, and this is, and I really appreciate you saying that, what, I, what I've, I've asked everyone to do is, with the workbench is turned on, not only will the features of the public record, public register, and public notice being available, but it will also turn on the uh, beginnings of the local communities, which you've heard me promise kind of over and over and over again without sort of seeing it come to fruition. This will now begin the tools necessary and the ability necessary for groups to start to form at a local level and communicate. Now, there's been nothing stopping that happening, but I think people have been waiting to see some formal direction. So I'm, I respect that. In that sense, I, I hope that you can direct whatever time you can make available towards your grassroots group, and then as your grassroots group connects up to other groups, and we call these campuses, mm-hmm. that those campuses then come together, form a province, then those provinces come together and form a university and then we build from the bottom up. If you can be part of that, then I believe we will be building a bottom-up system, remembering that I am removing myself in terms of any influence as far as being a top-down direction. And as that bottom-up comes, can you stop something that has no head, that is grassroots-based, but is a singularity? Is that easy to stop? Absolutely not, and it's dependent right. on the percentage of people in each of the individual campuses. It could be really a force to be reckoned with in any a community that's established. Correct. You, Katie. Correct, and that's what we that's what we want to do. Look, do you mind if I because I want to go through the questions? Please yeah. come back on if you've got other things to say. But did oh, I? Yeah. Do we cover those two? Yes. Look, thank you so much for sharing the the links. Sure. And, 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 and look, I, I thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Good on you. Okay. Uh, let me get to uh, some of the questions. That was great. And please, if you want to speak, I'd love to hear from you. Just all you have to do is press uh, star eight, I think it is, or hash eight, and then the call comes in. Um, the uh, question of uh, abatement was raised. What do I know about abatement? The issue of trespassing. Um, or the entry of a stranger without right onto freehold. Um, there is a number of elements towards uh, abatement um, and the use of abatement. Abatement and another word, enclosure, are two weapons that have been used by the, uh, by the Roman system to deprive us of uh, rights. Uh, what I'd say, we've, we've covered land, and this is going to be a subject that I think deserves a more dedicated effort in a, in a talk and probably even a distinct talk, several talks, is the Eucadian 
land registration system. And the Acadian land registration system is the only system that I have heard so far that is able to demonstrate a succession and hierarchy of ownership and enclosure that deprives the Roman system of claiming both the superior right and the legal effect of uh, enclosure quite apart from their practical enforcement at a local level. Only when we are able to bring a grassroots survey and use and identity, when we are able to demonstrate that the land is conquered and when we can also demonstrate uh, procedure and law and registration, can we claim and, and challenge their title. We will be doing this. We are doing this. And I'm excited to share with you that in a number of places, that land title system will be underpinned because the indigenous communities themselves are ensuring that title is clear and clean and ending the Roman claims. So this is going to be enormously beneficial, but title and land is a tricky and complex system. So I, I know I haven't answered abatement directly, but it does relate to land. It does obviously relate to registration. It relates to rights. It relates to things like mining rights and other things and the ability for people to come on and do what they like on land that we are supposed to own. So I ask for the person who asked that question, JZ7, please allow me to come back and give a full treatment on land at another talk where I can do justice to abatement, enclosure, um, eminent domain, these whole area of concepts that are associated and our response. Um, got a question here. Guest 7, can we download UK to content canons as PDFs for reading on mobile devices? Not yet. Uh, some of the PDFs are done. But part of team on the workbench is I look forward to the material being uh, in a ready PDF form. A number of you actually have converted it to PDF, and I'd suggest that if you go to University of Acadia, you will see some of the canons have been converted to PDF, and in fact, some of the text of Acadia has been converted. But the whole of it, no, has not yet been converted. But go to university.acadia.info and have a look. There are a number of PDFs. Um, uh, Lee, Linda Hugh asked this question. Uh, is the sacred oath on One Heaven membership going to be updated to be an executor oath rather than a trustee? Yes, it is. Last call, I explained that you have three trusts, a divine trust, a true trust, and superior trusts when you look at the relationship structure in Eucadia. The divine trust, you are the beneficiary. The true trust, your mind is the executor. And superior trust, you are a trustee for different services provided to you through the Eucadian structure. Because your membership principally is at the true trust level, um, I will make, at one heaven, I will make sure that the uh, oath is updated to being the executor. Yes, I will. Just give me a quick sip of water. Let me go and answer the uh, next call. We've got Alpha 999 on the line. One sec. Alpha 999, can you hear us? Uh, Alpha 999, can you hear us? Oop. Dropped off. Okay. Um, that's unfortunate. Hopefully you can come back on Alpha 999. I'll get on to uh, Ron. Ron, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Um, I, I, this is kind of a general question, but it relates directly to my case, and you're quite familiar with it. Um, would it be advisable to do a motion to dismiss based on uh, 
you know, those 12 presumptions 